I started Select a few years back, um, and uh, it's based in Boston. Um, it's a growing startup. Uh, it's got, uh, as expected, a lot of MIT presence, and I'm super excited about what it's doing. Uh, just at the highest level, um, this is the problem that it's solving. So, think of think of a retailer. Think of a massive retailer. Uh, your favorite retailer. Think of Macy's. Think of uh, Home Depot. Think of uh, Sears. Uh, whichever you like. What are these retailers? Uh, so if you go back to the history of retailer, right? Uh, retailers are nothing but, it's a French word in some sense. Um, it says that, you know, you buy meat in large amount and you sell it in chunks. And by selling it in chunks, you make money. Thankfully, the modern retail has changed. The modern retail is nothing but um, a classical physical marketplace. What it does is that it, on one hand, it brings uh, customers to its stores, which are across the country, say thousands of them. And it brings uh, uh, sellers or vendors or their products to their stores. It's sometimes trying to match customers to products. Now, historically, the dimensions of each one of them were small. But now what has happened is that I've got customers which are on the order of, depending on the size of the chain, tens of millions to hundreds of millions at times. And as far as the number of products are concerned, again, depending on the dimension, the number, number of different products that I bring potentially at bear to sell are on the order of million to tens of millions to sometimes hundreds of millions. So really the question is that, um, which products should I put in which one of my stores, a New York store versus Boston store? That's a difficult problem because um, while in ideal world, I would like to put all the products in all the stores, in reality, you can put a very, very small fraction of set of products that you can potentially source in, in any given store. And again, you also want to uh, stagger it over time and maybe you also want to price it right. And again, all of this depends on what customers like. So if I show you A, B and C, you might end up buying A, versus if I show you B and C, you might end up buying B and so on and so forth. The so question is that what you put collectively what you put at which store location, at what time and what price, that determines what will be the effective demand that you will see at each of the stores. And many of the modern problems are such that the data that we have available is extremely sparse. So think of uh, a shirt like the one that I'm wearing right now. Now, before it went out on the shelf for uh, sell, most likely it was not sold before. So really they had zero data about this shirt. They had some data about shirts like this, but not exactly this. Question, how do we, they decide what shirt to put? Um, and uh, make matters worse, people's interest trends constantly keep changing. And now in our modern world where we've got this Pinterest and so on, that's even sort of getting um, much, much faster trend cycles. So all of this make prediction of demand uh, or effective demand of customer really hard. and. Uh, some of the things that sort of I told you earlier are precisely the elements that can help uh, make uh, demand prediction or actually demand prediction easy or relatively better from existing data. And that's what Complete does. I mean, uh, this, is, uh, this is the core uh, operational questions that retailers have to worry about. In uh, retail jargon, this one way to think of this, this is uh, assortment planning uh, or optimization. And that's what they're doing. But of course, this is not just uh, for retailer. If you think of retail as a much larger, uh, 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 much larger system, where on one hand the manufacturer are producing the products, and to the other end the consumers are consuming it, and retailers are just sitting in the middle. And in each stage of this supply chain, one has to worry about the next hop. What is the demand that one should uh, predict, and making um, accurate demand prediction at each of these stage can help uh, bringing a massive operational efficiency. So retailers care about it, the people who distribute cares about it, upstream manufacturer care about it, and downstream people who actually do delivery, they also care about this. Um, so there are two pieces here. There's a data piece and then there are algorithm piece. Okay, so you give me the same amount of data, I want better algorithms. And you give me same algorithm, I want more data. So it's a both pieces. Uh, at the highest level, um, commercially, the way we are doing right now for, uh, uh, for our, some of our uh, customers, um, it's effectively the customer's uh, uh, transaction or point of sales data. That's the basic. 
Uh, in addition, you have inventory snapshots of what products were there in the stores when things got purchased. Uh, in addition, most of the retailers are, uh, uh, are sophisticated enough these days that they have their online customer activity data is well managed and well logged. Let's call that the highest level, the browse or click log data. Okay. So these are, um, these are the three pieces along with, of course, product information such as here are the images, here is the text description, here is the hierarchy of product, call it catalog information. Put those things together and that gives you a rich enough uh, starting point. And uh, that's, what, um, that's what we use primarily to get started. Now, of course, there are sophisticated customers which might have a lot more than that, uh, such as, um, hey, I've got a social feed that's uh, telling me something about my customers and my products or um, I have information which is weather information and that's helping me understand um, consumption of a certain type of beverages, for example, et cetera, et cetera. And again, what you want to do is A, you want to get the most information out of available data, but B, as, a, as you think about uh, building a product for uh, this, this space, you want to have a technology that's flexible enough to incorporate new data sets without much difficulty and that's uh, the technological um, achievements that we have at the company.